we've taken Florence Leganke's original 1928 design and this is our updated version. The quilt has 20 different basket blocks, each with a different flower. There are 17 different flowers. And the patterns were from the fictitious Nancy Page Club. Now Florence was a home economist from Cleveland, Ohio. And even though she was well known for her specialty cookbooks, she was a prolific quilt designer as well. Well, Garden Bouquet is one of her well-known quilts. Oh, and it has the saucy bird and the meek bird perched right on the side of the urn. Now, in each urn is a different flower. Oh, it's just so much fun. I love it. Now, another quilt of Florence's is the magic vine. Oh, an exquisite one with rows of flowers on an applique vine. Now, actually, the blocks are smaller. They're about six inches square, and they're just sewn together into that vine. Well, there were many newspaper series quilts by Florence as this one. This is for kids. One, two, buckle my shoe. I just love this clipping. It says, he and she met on the quilt block and all is well. Well, just true to her stories, Nancy says, here's the little boy courting the little girl with a flower, which Nancy says is the way it should be. And then the girl in her fetching bonnet isn't half as surprised as she should be. And then I just love this one. And it's our little quilt block maid goes into the kitchen. Oh, and here she is in her long apron all ready to cook. Actually, I think that those were stitchery patterns, like little embroidery, um, embroidery uh -huh. stem stitch, really. Well, the one that I love is the French bouquet. Now, this is block number 10 featuring our autumn friend, the cosmos as big as life. And then the flowers are all tied up in a big bow. So we decided to design our own French bouquet. So we took the original Florence Leganke design and we've added the flowers from our own quilt. And I started with the harebell. There's uh, seven different harebells, three different colors. And then uh, the jonquil in the middle really sets off the, the yellow birds. And do you recognize the saucy bird and mm. The, the meek, meek bird. bird. <laughs> and if you kind of focus in on that wing, you notice the, the fabric. It's a perfect feather. Yeah, just exactly what we needed for that uh, wing. And then finishing with that beautiful fuchsia, which just fans out and fills the space nicely. Oh, beautiful. Thank well, you. Patty, those birds are singing. And they're saying, let's get sewing. <laughs> Oh, that's as corny as Nancy's stories. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it I like my applique fast and flat, and Patty likes her applique fussy and dimensional? Well, it's just the way we are, I guess. Hmm? Well, I think you're flat and fabulous. Oh, I think <laughs> it's because our mother dressed us funny. <laughs> Could be. Well, I am the Fusible Lady today, and I have my patterns pre-printed on Fusible Interfacing. And boy, is it easy to do. Right here are all of the pieces that you need on the Fusible. This is the bow with the two ties. You need to have two birds, oh, the fussy and the meek. You've got two wings, five leaves on this great fabric right here and then a jonquil base. Now there's just one other piece that I have and I'm gonna show you the technique for applique and that is the top of the stem. Now this is the fusible interfacing. It's got the dotted side, the fusible side, next to the right side of the fabric. This is the pattern piece that's um, pre-printed right on there. It says leave open right here and I already stitched on the line, ooh, with a tiny 20 stitches to the inch. And then you just take your sharp scissors and trim one eighth inch away. Oh, if you have been watching this series, you're just going to have to bear with me. And after you trim it, you take these scraps, get rid of them, and you grab your turning tools. You need to have a straw and a bodkin, a fat, uh, fast food drinking straw's got to be fat and you need to also have a ballpoint bodkin. It's got to be ballpoint. Forget those little pincher things because it's not the right one. So you take your straw and you put it right in the opening, put it to the top and you turn the fabric so that it's right on the end of the straw. Just take your bodkin, da, 
da 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 Oops, I didn't mean to push it the whole way through. <laughs> but that works anyways. It's like a little flag. Yeah, well, it's okay. And now once you turn it right side out, actually right here on these corners, this would be a good part to just take your stiletto and from the right side, just dig right in there, dig deep, pull out those corners, and then take a wooden iron. This is what a wooden iron looks like. And you just press from the outside of the fabric and you get nice, crisp edges. Well, I think I did good. How about you, Pat? Well, Are you ready to mark the stems? I've already marked the stems. Oh, great. And well, this is us. how I did it. My background square is 16 inches. I folded it in half on the diagonal, creased the center, and then I'm placing the square on the placement sheet. I'm lining up the lower corner of the background with these lines and then the center stem I line up with the center crease and then we just place it on top and I can see through the fabric and I just trace one, two, three stems with and permanent marking pen. Are you ready to sew? I am. Here I it's am. Coming at you. Well the stems are strips that are cut on the bias. You need to have one and one fourth inch wide bias strips and you press them wrong sides together so that you can have a nice finish on the end of the bouquet. Make sure you just take that bias cut and fold it up in like this and so you don't have any end sticking up. Just trim that off. Whoop, just get rid of that little guy and then fold it so that the wrong sides are in. Now take your background sheet. Um, I need to have a quarter inch seam so I have my quarter inch um, foot on. You line up the raw edges with the line. Okay, with raw edges with the line. Let me grab my stiletto. Oh gosh, green thread would be great if I could only sew with green thread. Let me get my thread under the needle. All right, now. Oh, how about 18 stitches to the inch? And just keep that, fold, that raw edge lined up on the line. Pedal to the metal. Okay, you do the uh, center stem first and actually finish it off. Okay, we're at the end now. So you take, cut this off, and you have to press this over and flat and actually finish it off. You could go ahead and do a slip stitch, a blind stitch along that edge, or if you want to do it by machine, put an invisible thread and use a blind hem stitch and stitch that down. Okay, I'm going to do first this stem, and then I'll do the two side pieces, and then we'll go on. I sewed my stems down and they are perfect. Thank you. So I'm using the placement sheet again to place the top of the stem and then I have two bow ties one on the, the right one on the left Oops, get it right side and then I'm going to add some dimension to the bow with this center strip I press the raw edges underneath and then just make a tuck in the center wrap it around and since you're the Sewing wizard, I'll let you stitch while I press. <laughs> she would do this by hand. Of course. <laughs> All you have to do is just take those two ends, just put it right underneath your needle, oh, and just stitch back and forth right on that little piece. How about a little reverse stitch on it, and we'll do it great. Whoa, locking it up. And then just cut off those threads and trim off the end if you need to. Let me pull that out. Perfect. All centered. Okay, we are a good team. We're going to get this done. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> can I we'll have just, this when you're done? <laughs> you can have it. All it's right. for you. Okay, now when you have batting inside the applique, it takes a, sometimes a, a little longer for it to stick. Um, and if it doesn't stick right away, you can use a little water bottle and spray a little water and then it will really stick. Good. And then uh, we're going to add the, the jonquil goes on top of the top of the stem. And I'm just going to place this. I better get my placement sheet just to get it uh, right. And I'm using the other page of placement. 
And you can see this is actually half of the pattern, which you can arrange half and then balance it mm -hmm. on that the other sense. side. Yeah, and I'm going to, again, line up the center crease. And here's the base of the jonquil. And we'll fuse that down. And then these are the, the dimensional petals that I've used a template. And I'm putting fabric to fabric. I have three petals that I turn right side out, turn under the raw edge, and then line up the three petals in a row. And take a big long stitch. You got it. And then pull it tight and connect the circle. I think the jonquil is one of the easiest flowers in the whole quilt. And one of the prettiest, too. Yeah, and one of the prettiest. Okay. And then we'll just put this on top of the base. Goes like that. And then the center is made from a strip. This is cut uh, two and a half by three and a half, fold in half, so along the two and a half inch side. Easy. And then finger press the seam open, turn it uh, right side out, and then with a needle and thread, stitch along the raw edge and just pull it tight and turn over the folded edge. Aww. The yeah, and then I'm going to tie a knot, keep the thread attached, and just pull right through the middle. There's a little opening in the center of the, the petal, and I'll just stitch right through the center. And hold it in place. Hold it in place. Oh, you can. You can do that later. It's okay. Oh, Pull it through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Now, the leaves. Perfect. I have five leaves, which I'm starting with the center leaf, and the very tip of the leaf, I line up with the center crease. And then I will arrange the two leaves on each side. And you can look at it to make sure that it's balanced. Use your placement sheet. Or another option, if you want, you can wait and finish all your flowers first and then arrange them with your leaves. Get your spacing perfect, and then you can fuse them down. Okay. Uh, but I'd like to show you the, the hair bell, which we do have uh, three different colors of hair bell. And I have a purple, a blue, and a dark purple. Looks like a couple of dark purples. Yeah. And I've uh, placed fabric right side together, use a, a template, trace the outline, sew on the line, trim and turn. You've done this before. Ta-da! Why am I showing you? <laughs> okay, and these are stuffed, and then uh, if you just draw a circle, you can use, I, I believe it's about the size of a quarter, you can use a one-inch circle master, draw the circle, and then sew on the drawn line, and just pull it tight, and lightly gather the center. And then uh, do some French knots in the middle, and then I would just arrange my seven little harebells uh, within the leaf area. And then the fuchsia, we're going to really make it sparkle. Um, this is just like we did the center of the jonquil. Uh, the same size, two and a half by three and a half, fold it in half, sew and turn, right side out. And then with the needle and thread, just gather along the raw edge and pull it tight and knot and then that little uh, top of the hair bed, or the fuchsia is going to just go right over the top. All right. So this is what the top of the fuchsia yeah, looks like. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Uh, again, we're sewing fabric to fabric using a template and we'll turn it right side out and we'll just get all our pieces finished, fuse them down and now we'll show you how to finish the wall hanging. Our flowers are all in place and they look beautiful, oh, Thank Pat. you. 
They're wonderful. Now I'm adding the side triangles. Now you add them to two opposite sides first and then the two remaining sides. They come from 12 and a half inch squares that are cut once on one diagonal. You need to have two 12 and a half inch squares. So just the remaining one is left. So let's go ahead and just take it and line it up, flip it right sides together, and when you place it right sides together, you have to make sure that you have equal tips hanging out on both sides. That's the thing, equally spaced onto the side of this. So once you have it equally spaced, I like to just take pins, and usually I push them from the inside out so that whenever I use that quarter inch foot, then they don't get in the way. And there's one more tip, because right here, when you have this little edge sticking out, I think it's best so you can use that bar and the quarter inch foot if you just trim that off straight even and they are definitely oversized. Okay, so then just take this piece, flip it right sides together, put it right underneath the machine, quarter inch seam allowance and pedal to the metal right along there. Make sure your edges are lined up. That is always helpful. Okay, well, I finished this. Pat, would you like to go ahead and show the second wall hanging? Yeah, I have another version of the French bouquet. On this one, I used different flowers. You'll recognize the zinnia with the, the ruching in the center. And then this is a new flower that's not in her quilt. It's a forsythia, which is one of my favorites. I love the color yellow. And you can certainly design any of your own uh, flowers for your quilt. Once you learn the dimensional techniques, you'll really want to just design all of your favorite flowers in fabric. And then on the hair bell, I want to show you two different ways to sew down the flowers. This is the Eleanor Burns quick wet method. If you, oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, if you just tack the points and the center, that, uh, and then let it blow in the wind. Or if you want to spend more time, you can just stitch around the outside edge and it gives a flatter look in the flower. Ooh, so you're done? Yeah, I'm done. I finished uh, before you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, okay and now. I'm ready to press. All I want you to do is just go ahead, set that seam, lift okay. it up and over. Isn't Teamwork that, here. That blue is so pretty. It is. It's very It's restful. called Sky. Isn't that a perfect name for this fabric? And this piece of fabric is so great because you could just free motion around, right around those leaves. Yeah. It would be wonderful. And the seam is under the triangle. And Good. then I think it's time for those birds to come flying in here. Oh, time. Yeah. Here is... That must be the... Meek bird. He's looking down. And you can arrange the birds on the, the, the background triangles or onto your light, wherever, wherever you think is, is uh, appropriate. And this is the fun, is just kind of playing with them. And the them. saucy bird. He's looking up. And then we'll just hit it with some steam. And those, are, those two pieces have the fusible interfacing on the back. So she can just get them in place easily. Well, how about I get the quilt from under? Yeah, there you we go. don't want to fuse down two quilts. Now that little bird, he needs an eye, doesn't he? He does. So we got our, uh, our needle with some embroidery floss. And I'm just going to pull through the fabric. Ooh, catch muscles. The knot. Yeah, catch the knot in back. And then when you do a French knot, if you just wrap the, the uh, embroidery floss around the needle, oh, as many times as you like. You can do two or three if you want. He's got really big eyes, so I gave him about four knots. And just reinsert the needle next to where you came up. And then this is the important thing is when you're pulling it, uh, hold, hold, hold on. on. Hold Muscle on girl. I know. <laughs> There we go. There you Hold go. tight with the left hand to give a nice tight knot. Perfect. Now this is the exact same way that you used to hold the hair bells in place. And look at those little French knots on the end of the fuchsia. Yeah, and these are done with uh, only two strands of embroidery floss. If you want more of a delicate thin line, you can uh, use two or three strands. Okay, so now can I square it up? 
You can do that. Actually, we need to go ahead and get those uh, birds sewn in place, but we're just moving on. Okay, now, I actually have the square oversized. And so I'm going to place it on the grid, on the cutting board, so that I can see a square. Now I want to add a folded border on here. So I see that I have, from this tip out, approximately 5 eighths of an inch. But I just really want to have a square wall hanging. Boy, there's nothing worse than a wall hanging that you have to hang high and keep moving. <laughs> so I've got the I've got a perfect uh, seam allowance there. I have about three or five eighths of an inch down here. I have it on the grid. It's on the grid in the opposite end. So I'm just going to go ahead, hold this flat, walk my hand up because of all that depth in the flower, and just square off that side. So you need to do this on all four sides, but I've got to just keep moving on because I want to show you how to add the folded border. Now the folded border comes from a one and a fourth inch wide strip. It's just cut salvage to salvage and it's actually pressed in half, folded in half if I could open it, wrong sides together. And you just take and place it on one side and stitch. You need to have a longer stitch length. We've been sewing normally on uh, 15 stitches to the inch. I'm going to lengthen it to about 10 stitches to the inch. If you don't lengthen it, boy, you get those ruffles in your folded border. Okay, so you just do not open these out. You just lay, lay them on top of each other and just sew them around the outside edge before you add the last border. Okay, Pat, would you like to yeah, show some Yeah, and I wanted to quilting? show um, what's happening right here once the folded border is added. Notice how it uh, just glazes the tip of the triangle perfectly. And then you can do a little outline sewing a quarter inch away, and then some stippling in the triangles. And then this is a nice way, as you mentioned earlier, you can do free motion quilting uh, to outline the shapes in the fabric. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, I just about have my border on there. And I'll just show you how to finish that. You just really square off that corner here. The second one goes on like this. You add folded borders on all four sides, add a three inch border, bind it, and your wall hanging will be simply beautiful. Patty and I have been really busy. We added the folded border to all four sides, and this is what the corner looks like once you get that folded border added on there. Next came two and a half inch borders on all four sides, and then we layered the quilt with backing on the bottom, cotton batting next, the quilt top we smoothed from the center out. Then we got busy safety pinning. That's the best fun. You just take a pinning tool like this, one inch pins, and you just close them all around your quilt. Put your pin in, close them, and you just want to make sure you can put your hands down, touch a pin. The straight pins were Patty's idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're doing straight stitch in the ditch, if you place straight pins perpendicular to your stitches, it will keep them from shifting. And you don't want to do this on a big quilt, though. No it's very way. dangerous. No way. It's very dangerous. Well, I started adding the binding around the outside edge. It is a strip that's two and three-fourths inches wide. We seamed it together so that it fits the whole way around. And then you just press it in half, wrong sides in. Now, I started in the middle of one side. I have my walking foot on and about three... Uh, 3.0 stitch length and right here I'm coming into this corner I'm gonna put a straight pin so I stop that distance away from the corner that's exactly what my seam allowance is so when I get right up here to this pin needle down oh it is it's on the pin I think I'll just pull that out okay so you have your needle in you just turn it to the second side drop your uh, presser foot and you just reverse sew right off and then free it. Pull it forward so you can take this corner, fold it up at a perfect angle and then just hold on to that tight and fold it back down. Ooh, I love the color of this binding. Okay, it's looking good. And then you just continue sewing 
and go the whole way around. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you trim it up. Okay, so you take that corn. Let me find the one that I worked on already. Okay, here it is right here. I trimmed the batting and the backing up to the binding. And then when you take this and you open it up, this is going to be perfect. The drum should roll. Ta-da! And that's what it looks like. Then all you need to do is just fold it over on the back side. And I would stitch it in the ditch from the front side by machine. And Patty would do it by hand. <laughs> you go ahead and finish up your simply beautiful wall hanging.